Yeah, essentially, so with Chekhov's gun, yeah, the, uh, the kind of idea with Chekhov's gun is if you see, you know, if you see a gun in the beginning of the story, it needs to go, to go off at the end, right? That's what people talk about is so if you have your plot here, you have this idea and we see this gun, then the idea is way over here that, you know, the gun goes off, right? Now, usually if you are building your story, it can be helpful to actually build it in reverse. So for example, you might have elements at this point of your story or this point of your story or this point of your story that are integral and important and important for your plot to move forward, right? And so if let's say you have a gun go off here, right? Therefore, if you have this gun go off here, we need to then set it up in the beginning of the story, right? So you can think about it in reverse and that can be helpful. So you can start with the payoff and then say, okay, how do I show this to the audience earlier before I actually use it? Um, and so also if you kind of split your story into its acts, right? So we kind of have one, two, a, two, B and three, and this is your midpoint. So let me do this. Oh. So one, one thing that I found is you want to make sure if you have elements that are popping up here, right? We want to see these before this midpoint, right? And I think thinking about your story in two halves, again, this is why I hammer your midpoint and why I hammer your act two, not just being this big fun and games act, but leading us to the midpoint and then leading us away from the midpoint. Um, because if you have elements here, you know, we want to see those in act one, right? Anything that's going to affect the climax of your midpoint, if we can set up those story rules in that story world, those story world elements earlier in the story, ideally in act one here, then it's going to hit way harder because ideally we're not going and constantly seeing new ideas in your story, right? We are seeing the same key and important and specific ideas repeated over and over. So rather than having 85 set pieces or 85 settings that are new every single time, we are coming back to old places that we have been, right? Or we are seeing new ideas or we're seeing ideas we've already seen in act one in different ways. Um, and so that can help for this. When people talk about story weaving, really what that means is setting up the elements of your story and then seeing them repeated again. So rather than trying to find a billion ideas to place in your story, see if you can find like 10 important motifs or story rules that you can really hone in on and then change them multiple times. Um, so if we see something in act two a, uh, well, especially like, let me just think about it or talk about it this way. So after this midpoint, like you want to reduce the amount of new ideas you're in, you're entering in, right? So we should see more payoffs. And this is, you know, if you think about it, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? We want to see more payoffs and way less new elements in the second half of the story, right? This is where you're introducing ideas. And of course, you can also introduce more ideas here. But ideally... Once we're at that midpoint and now we're at the second half, like again, if we're thinking about this as the lie world and this as the truth world, then we want to, in this second half of the story, return to the ideas that we set up in Act 1 and Act 2A and look at them through this new lens, right? So that's why like characters changing their beliefs is so important because what they're doing is they are looking at the same things and ideas and people and problems, but they're looking at it through this new lens, 
right? They're looking at it through a lens of the truth. And that is what becomes so important. So in Snowpiercer, right, we have uh, elements in the beginning like chronal. So if we want to talk about, ugh, if we want to talk about motifs, uh, chronal in Snowpiercer is set up to be this drug, right? So chronal equals a drug. And so then Nam, the guy that Curtis saves out of the prison uh, train uh, cell car, he wants this drug. And Curtis is like, oh, this guy's just a druggie. All he wants is this chronal. He's, you know, he's just a big drug addict. Then at the end, spoiler alert, but it's okay because you guys are writers and you, you can handle it. Uh, the meaning of chronal changes. So now at the end, we see chronal is a bomb, right? It creates a bomb. It's highly flammable. And so what they do in the beginning of the story is they tell you that chronal is a drug, and they also tell you that it's highly flammable. But you are viewing it as a drug because that's what the story has told you that it is. And then we get to the end of the story, and Nam says... You idiot, I'm not just a drug addict. I'm collecting this because it's a bomb because we're getting out of this train. And this then sets up this huge choice at the end of the story, right? So notice that it's not the thing that changes. We're not introducing another idea. We are changing the meaning of that idea based around your character experiencing the truth and realizing the truth and leaving the lie. So the lie is that Cronal is just a drug and it's just for drug addicts and this kind of thing. Nam shows him, no, you're wrong. You don't have a full picture of the truth. This is a bomb that I, and I've been creating it so that we can actually get out of the train. And now it's time for me to tell you this because now we have the option. Now we have the choice, right? And so this is kind of how it all blends together, right? You've, hear, you've heard me talk about the fundamental driver of a story is choice, right? The decision maker is the person in power in a scene. The choice maker is the person in power in real life. Whoever makes the decision is the person in power. And so um, what is happening at the end of the story is Nam is trying to get Curtis to make a, to agree with him on his choice to blow the train. Right. And so to do that, he must tell him, no, Cronal is a bomb. This is what we're doing. You need to do this. The train cannot be fixed. The system we're inside must be changed. You need to make a choice to destroy the train. Right. And he does this by showing us an element that we had set up for us in act one. <clears throat> and then we see it again in 2A. Right. We see in 2A, we see Nam snorting the Cronal, right, using it like a drug. Okay, again, reinforcing the lie. And then Nam continues to collect it over here. Right, again, showing us this is, you know, we have the setup over here. Then we have a reminder or progress. Um, it's, uh, who calls it progress? Um, like Brian, I think his name is Brian Sanderson. Um, he calls it progress, not a reminder. And I like that idea. Um, so now we're seeing this, this same element again, then we see it again, right? Another progress here. We see it again. Nam is now collecting a ton of this stuff. And now we have the final payoff where the meaning of the item changes. Chronal is a bomb. And now we have a choice to make, Right. So this is how you want to be thinking. What's up, Miss Foreskin? <laughs> this is how you want to be thinking about uh, your setups and payoffs, right? And again, chronal is a motif. Chronal, chronal is this meaningful element, and the meaning of it changes, right? We get to Act 3, and the meaning is changed. We're not introducing another idea. We're changing the meaning of ideas we've already brought into the story. And that is how you want to build setups and payoffs and motifs and actually make them meaningful. Now, what if the story did this? What if the story talked to, talked to us about Cronal in the beginning 
And then we don't really see it again. And then Nam grabs some other drug here. And then maybe he grabs some other thing here, right? And now we're just introducing new element, new element, new element, right? And now they don't have meaning, right? They're devoid of meaning because we're not seeing them over and over again, right? We're not seeing how they're actually progressing us through the journey of the character shedding their lie and going to the truth. That's why you want to involve a motif or this element into the story. So this is why you don't want to keep adding new ideas because they become meaningless, right? The fact that we see it again and again and again, and then we have the meaning of it change in act three is why it's important. And this is why you don't want to just add new ideas and add new ideas and add new ideas. Pick the most important 10 items or motifs and expand them. Think about how they can be changed based upon your character's arc.